The final score, Wrexham Women 2, Connors Key Nomads 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC, and I think we need an awful lot of context on what was a brilliant and historic day for the football club and for Welsh women's football. I mean, let's just get this into perspective. Nine and a half thousand fans, that's the biggest crowd in the history of Welsh women's football. Not only that, bigger than any League of Wales crowd ever, for, that's the men's league, so, do we not have a situation here where we are throwing our cards on the table and inviting Cardiff and Swansea to try and compete? This could be fantastic for Welsh women's football. In fact, we can even get to the point where we're the one country in the world where the women's domestic league is bigger than the men's domestic league. And that, that's quite an achievement, isn't it? There's other context, though. Wrexham, of course, in winning this game with a late winner from Rosie Hughes, have managed to be the first Wrexham side of any description in all those years of history to have a 100% league season. They won the league, they were a fantastic presentation on the pitch for them and for the under-19 women's team who also won their league unbeaten. But yeah, the women's team, 100% record, absolutely remarkable. And my goodness, they deserve those fantastic scenes at the end. But anyway, let's take it through from the start of a, a fantastic day. Brilliant crowd coming in, striking that it's a different type of crowd as well. A lot more children, a lot more women, and a different feel around the ground as well, which also I think is wonderful, giving some people an opportunity to sample what it's like to come to the race course. Uh, they will not have been disappointed. Wrexham, of course, facing serious opposition. We've been steamrolling teams all season, but Connorsky Nomads have too. And we essentially won the league by winning 3-1 at Connorsky in, in a massive top-of-the-table match. And then clinched this, of course, with that massive win at Rill. But Connorsky Nomads are no mugs. And they showed that because from the very start, they were punting pressure on. Wrexham were without Mary Gibbard in midfield and had to reshuffle in defence a little bit as well. And came under a lot of pressure in the first 20 minutes. Connors Key, a bit more physical in their style of play, were getting at Wrexham's defence too easily and could easily have scored more, more than the one early goal that they got. Third minute, ball coming into the edge of the area and Kirsty Kural, who was absolutely outstanding, the Connors Key captain, hit an overhead kick which hit the bar and bounced away to safety. And so it was very much against the run of play when Wrexham, two minutes later, took the lead. Amber Lightfoot won the free kick. She had a terrific battle down the left-hand side with the corners key right back Andrews, as indeed did Rebecca Pritchard on the other side up against the, the corners key left back, Hopkinson. Um, but on this occasion, Lightfoot won the free kick and TJ Dane standing on it is out on the left wing, about 30 yards out swept a magnificent shot, caught the keeper out and it drifted over her hands and into the net to give Wrexham the lead. But like I said, it was against the run of play. Kural was really impressive, dropping off into midfield and making the play. She could dribble as well and was carrying the ball forwards well. And Wrexham's defence was starting to look a bit exposed. Although they were defending well, Erin Lovett did ever so well down the left-hand side. A number of crunching tackles and Phoebe Davis like Lovett, recently returned from injury, also defended her flank well. In the ninth minute, though, they could easily have been uh, go ahead and equalise the four Connors Key Nomads. Ball fe fed into the box, the dangerous Wild McGregor picking her up down the left channel, drilling in a, a shot. Excellent save by Del Morgan, who dived across to her right. It was going to nestle inside the far post and she managed at full stretch to tip the ball around the post for a corner but Wrexham didn't defend the corner well it was helped on Morgan came along the goal line to try and gather but couldn't gather it and it was poked back into the goal mouth where Harvey was able to slot it home and Connor Ski were level after 10 minutes and they pushed on Carl Kural with another excellent run down the middle fed the ball down the right channel Harley one on one but this time Morgan made amends really quick off her line and Harley had no real sight of goal and Morgan was able to save 
Wrexham was starting to get into the swing of things a bit more around the halfway stage of the half. When Wrexham were able to get the ball down and pass it about, they were having some joy. And also early diagonals out to Pritchard and Lightfoot on the wings were facilitating those battles with the fullbacks, and we were starting to cause issues. Now, Rosie Hughes, of course, who was phenomenally prolific before this game, averaging almost, believe it or not, a hat-trick every game over the two years she's been at Wrexham. She'd been pretty quiet in the early stages because Wrexham just weren't getting but service up to her but she sparked into life halfway through the half picking the ball up bursting forwards and feeding Lightfoot on the left side of the box with a clear sight of goal but her shot lacked power and was easily saved by Murphy but this got Wrexham going and we started to create a few more chances Dickens again with another wicked set piece delivery this time a corner from the left which went over Murphy once more Hamer did well to step in from the far post and head the ball off the line or Dickens would have added a direct goal from a corner to her spectacular free kick and then in the 24th minute the outstanding individual moment of the match. Rosie Hughes dropping deep, receiving the ball, three players tight on her, and somehow she managed to spin and get past a lot of them, drove forward, sidestepped one tackle, got at the edge of the area, sidestepped another, and then drove in a shot. Terrific last-ditch deflection, just took it over the bar, but a brilliant piece of individual skill. And you could see that just like Kural for Connors Key, Hughes, in a different way, was simply outstanding in terms of quality. First minute of added time, Wrexham went close again. Again, Hughes prompting intelligently, picking the ball up on the left, cutting inside and playing a fine ball to Phoebe Davis, who would come forwards and narrow from the right-back position. She took a touch and from the edge of the area, drilled a shot. Murphy at full stretch couldn't reach it, and it just scraped the left post and went wide. The second half was a slightly different story. Wrexham started to get on top of things. Hughes with a glorious pass into the box, again picking out Lightfoot, whose shot was deflected but was still going to curl into under the bar. Good reactions by Murphy to lunge and push the ball round the left post. But the game started to dry up in terms of chances, even though it was now looking open and players were starting to look a little bit tired, until a decisive substitution in the 58th minute. The skipper Kim Dutton came off. She'd done a good job in midfield, but it was a little bit of a reshuffle, which turned out to be uh, a tactical masterstroke. Mia Roberts, the daughter of Neil Roberts, came on at left-back, and there was a reshuffle in defence. <coughs> Beg your pardon. With Lovett slotting in at centre-back and Lily Jones stepping up into midfield. Now, Jones, a very different type of player to Dutton, and in this sort of game was exactly what the doctor ordered. Like I said, Connors, Key Nomads, maybe a little bit more physical than the Wrexham team, but goodness me, Jones, uh, despite being a teenager, has physicality to spare, and she really put a terrific spark into Wrexham's midfield. She started hunting th her players down, she enjoyed a duel of corral and was getting the ball off, and more than her teammates were able to, and she could drive play forwards too. It was an effervescent performance by her. She looked good at centre-back alongside Katie Sharp, but once she stepped up, she really, really started to influence the game. And it started to spin away from Connors Key Nomads. Although, they did have a couple of dangerous moments. Not least when Kural got it on the left and set off on a magnificent dribble. Breaking down the left-hand side. Getting to the corner flag and then, and then turning right. And driving down the goal line. Lovett was battling away with her. And managed to get a, a bit of a challenge in. Which I think Kural was asking for a penalty for. Um, but as she did so, that allowed Morgan to come in with Kural off balance. The keeper did well to slide in and kick the ball behind for a corner. That corner could have led to a goal. The ball swept in and Kylie Jones with a free header seven yards out and she failed to hit the target. But Wrexham was soon back on the attack. Uh, Hughes bursting forwards and creating a three-on-two break, sliding Lightfoot in with a lovely pass to put a one-on-one with the keeper. Lightfoot hit it well, great save by Murphy, who managed to tip it around the post. And then at the other end, Hewitt, who was come on a half-time for Connors Key and was looking very good, drove forwards well. Mia Roberts had ever so well to cover back and get a challenge in. She didn't get the ball off Hewitt, but she slowed down the attack. Hewitt still kept going, though, and hit a shot, which took a deflection, a nasty deflection, spinning over Morgan, but Morgan kept cool, used her feet well, and palmed the ball over the bar. 
Wrexham made another change of Hodson coming on the left-hand side to replace Mackenzie. Hodson going there meant Lightfoot dropped into the middle. And that's also, I think, helped in the latter stages. Lightfoot's being a real goal threat. Second top scorer in the division after Hughes, of course. And they were combining very, very dangerously and switching positions, looking to set things up for each other, while Hodson's increased physicality helped out on the left-hand side. Wrexham had a, another opportunity, a, a cheeky one, this. A throw-in, finding Lily Jones in the right corner of the box. And she tried an improvised hook, just launching it over the keeper. It dropped onto the roof of the net. By her frustrated reaction, she meant it. It wasn't just a, a pull to the far post. And she was unlucky not to hit the target. And then from the goal kick... Lightfoot did brilliantly to win the ball back and feed the ball forwards. Pritchard had a clear sight of goal, a terrific last-ditch tackle sliding in, denied her. Further changes were made to Clifton Stringer coming on at right back and Whitefoot coming on on right midfield. And it was Whitefoot who made a key intervention to set up the winning goal in the 83rd minute. Corner coming in, Wrexham, after a fashion, the ball bobbled around for a bit. Managed to get the ball clear to the clear towards the halfway line. Whitefoot found herself in a sprint against the Connors key player, running out from the Connors key half to see who could get there first. And Whitefoot did absolutely brilliantly to just get there first, nudge it past the defender and feed Rosie Hughes. And Hughes, well, did the rest. Ran at Andrews, the last defender, beat her, took on the keeper, sidestepped her, and ran the ball gleefully into an empty net to score what would be the winner. But Connors Key kept going, kept coming back and had a chance in the last minute. A free kick lofted in, half cleared. Bentley, the substitute, 15 yards out, brought it down well, but lashed it well over the bar, much to her frustration. And Wrexham could have got a goal as well in added time. Lightfoot breaking into the box dangerously once more. And again, the goalkeeper denying her. It must be said that Murphy in the Connors Key goal uh, made a number of good saves in order to keep her side in it. But then Morgan did too. This was an open game which felt like it should have had more than three goals in it. And a terrific advert for the second level of Welsh women's football in front of a, a magnificent engaged crowd. And then afterwards, well, we had the two trophy celebrations. First the under-19s, then the full team. And then the sight, and I've got to say this was magnificent, of all the players making a slow progress, working their way around the pitch as... So loads of the crowd stays well after the final whistle, well after the celebrations for autographs and selfies and the players were all obliging. They're probably still out there now. It was absolutely fantastic to see. Also, you know, substituted players who had to go off on the far side of the pitch <laughs> making a long progress, signing autographs as they made their way around. It was lovely. It had, a, it had a nice family atmosphere, but it also was a very serious atmosphere and a game in which the team delivered. Looking at the performance through the side, well, Morgan will be a little disappointed, I think, in goal that she wasn't able to gather the loose ball, which led to Connors Key's goal. But having said that, she is a quality player. She made good decisions a couple of times to get off her line and beat the strikers to it. She made a couple of agile stops as well. And she's a good goalkeeper who, you know, clearly, I mean, everyone knows she's a key mainstay for the side. But, yeah, she looked very solid. Phoebe Davis coming in only at their first start since injury and was rock solid at right back. Strong tackling coming forwards, that good shot from the edge of the area that nearly went in. An awful lot of the action, especially in the first half, was going on on the opposite side from her, but she kept things solid. I was, I was very, very impressed with the way Davis played. And then, when we reshuffled in defence, she ended up going centre back and again we dealt with set pieces extremely well. Lily Jones. Started off at centre-back, moved into midfield and, you know, very much a Franz Beckenbauer of the team. I thought very impressive. Physicality, brilliant as well. And had a cracking match. Alongside at the start at centre-back was Katie Sharp and Sharp also did very well. With Connors Key put a lot of pressure on Wrexham in the opening stages and the back four were excellent in the way that they repelled it. Likewise as well, Erin Lovett has... A lot of pressure on her. Kural often was going at her. Wild McGregor was going at her. But her tackling was excellent. And her recovery uh, pace was very good as well. On the occasions when they managed to get past, they couldn't shake her off. Like that chance Kural had when she came round the back of the fence in the second half. And Morgan was able to come out and kick it away because Lovett kept leaning on Kural and just not allowing her to set her on the ball. 
she finished off at centre back as well. Our, our back four by the end was completely changed with substitutes at full back and the starting full backs at centre back. Wrexham's double pivot, Kim Dutton, the skipper, again had a good solid game, but it was it was a bit of a battle when she was on the pitch because Connors Key were playing well through midfield and often, often by passing midfield as well, but she got some important interceptions and some nice little switches of play in. TJ Dickens had a cracking game, scored a free kick of course, but a real creative force was able to come forwards and use the ball threateningly. <clears throat> and the second line, I, I really rate Amber Lightfoot, and she can go inside or outside. She was coming inside a lot of the time. Had a great battle with Megan Andrews, who was a real feisty right back. But Lightfoot was a constant threat. It's surprising she didn't get on the score sheet, but Murphy made a number of good saves from her. On the right hand side, likewise, Pritchard, inverted winger, trying to get inside, wasn't able to get around the outside and deliver much, but was able to get into the box to have some good threatening moments. Libby McKenzie playing in the middle of them was flitting around and offering good support and trying to create overloads on either flank and popped a couple of decent balls forward to Hughes. In the first half, she had to drop off a little bit to try and help at the midfield more though because, as I said, Connors Key were successfully able to bypass and drag Wrexham deep. And then Rosie Hughes. What do you say about Rosie Hughes? She's Rosie Hughes. She's very good at football. I mean, that goal was magnificent. There were some moments of sheer quality and class which were absolutely brilliant and so enjoyable. She's got a joie de vivre about her. And as was pointed out in the Ask Wrexham comments, um, that Paul Mullen very much is the men's Rosie Hughes rather than the other way around. She's a brilliant striker and fittingly won the game. The subs came on and did their jobs as well. Clifton Stringer on the right at right back was solid Maya, and carried it forwards on occasions. Mia Roberts, that terrific tackle that she made on Hewitt was crucial just to slow the progress of a, a dangerous breakaway. Uh, Hodgson on the left-hand side put in some good covering work as well. And there was another sub and I knew I'd forget. Hang on a second. My mind's gone. No, it's gone. I'm gutted. What is wrong with me? I'm going to cheat and look on the on the website, but I'll, I'll bluff in the meantime by saying uh, that the Ask Wrexham Buckets virtual bucket collection, of course, which was something magnificent, which our fans in America have dreamed up, raised over two thousand pounds for Welsh Women's Aid, which is utterly, utterly magnificent. I know they've got some other ideas. Uh, in, in the pipeline that they can do how could I forget that it was Whitefoot of course who came on as well and played that crucial role in the winning goal so fantastic performance fantastic entertainment and a fantastic and historic day Wrexham you know completing a 100% season never done that before winning a trophy haven't done that since 2013 and uh, yeah, giving a bit of a treat to the owners oh by the way Kudos to our owners who also went down as Connors Key were in a huddle after the match and shook their hands, something which the Connors Key players definitely, definitely appreciated. But they were in the middle of the celebrations to the owners and, you know, we should say thank you to them because, frankly, this just doesn't happen without the takeover. I, I was thinking about how, you know, it's great people like Kim Dutton, Lily Jones, Katie Sharp, who came through from the, you know, the, the fun half-term uh, football sessions that Gemma and Owen and everybody were putting on. You know, they are fans of the club. They are delighted. They're playing on the race course. That's, that, that's a big deal for any Wrexham fan, isn't it? But it's them and all the other players who that means so much to. <sighs> because, I mean, think about the, the loyal bands of a couple of hundred who've been going up to Ponky all the time and supporting the team. Think of uh, the fact that in when you go up to Ponky, you see so many young girls in their kit enjoying the game. Think of how it inspires the the younger generation to be loyal and go to up to up to Ponky, up to the bank, see those games, and now see the that can transfer to the racecourse. And also think of all the other things that people that have shown loyalty. I couldn't help thinking of Colin Henry, our media manager, who loyally has been reporting on all the women's games. It must mean a lot for him to see that this is now coming down to the race course in front of such a crazy crowd. Also, of course, let's not forget Steve Dale, Gemma Rowan, all the work that the coaching staff and everybody behind the scenes have done. This is a magnificent example of what the owners said they would do. They have looked at the good work people have been doing and supersized it and long may it continue 
Of course, the larger challenge lies beyond because the playoff now with Britain Ferry to actually get into the top division. That'll be at Newtown and Wrexham will be desperate to get there in order to get closer to fulfilling Rob and Ryan's ambition for them to be the top women's team in Wales. But what a transformative influence they've had. And today was an absolutely glorious piece of evidence of that. The final score of Wrexham 2, Connorsky Nomads 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC. And my wife enjoyed it and all, didn't you? Just a bit. Just a bit. She got <laughs> acknowledgement from Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you watch it, Reynolds. I'm coming for you. <laughs> keep, keep, keep it. Uh. Yeah, and on that articulate bombshell, bye everyone. <laughs>